peace be with you. Friends, it's a joy to welcome you to worship on this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. As we hear and meditate on God's word to us in Holy Scripture and lift up our hearts to God in prayer. If you would like to learn more about our parish and its ministries and how you can support our mission, please visit us online. There's a link to our church website in the video description below. We begin our worship today with a short reading, the gospel appointed for this Sunday, the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I hear the story of the healing of blind Bartimaeus, I always think of perhaps the most famous visually impaired person of all time, Helen Keller. I'm sure that most of us are familiar with at least some aspects of her life story. Keller lost both her sight and her hearing following an illness early in her childhood. And yet, with the help of her devoted teacher, Ann Sullivan, she learned to communicate and eventually went on to earn a university education and become an author, a political activist, and a lecturer. Helen Keller is one of recent history's great heroines, as far as I'm concerned. In January of 1933, when she was 52 years old, Keller wrote an article which appeared in The Atlantic magazine entitled, Three Days to See. And in that article, she offered a meditation on what she would like to see if she were granted just three days of sight. And that article, which you can still find online, is a powerful meditation on the things that are truly important in life. Keller said that on the first day, she'd like to be able to see all of her friends, all of the people whom she had known throughout the years. On the second day, she said she'd like to be able to look around at nature, to see what the flowers and the trees and the rivers that she had only experienced by touch actually looked like. And on the final day, she said she would like to see her home city of New York to watch the hustle and bustle of her city at work. Her article closes with perhaps its most profound statement. She wrote, I who am blind can give one hint to those who see. Use your eyes as if tomorrow you were stricken blind. Now Helen Keller and Bartimaeus, the blind man, lived in very different circumstances. Today we hear the story of Bartimaeus, the beggar whose sight was restored in an encounter with our Lord. And it is a powerful story. When Jesus announced his ministry, he read in the synagogue from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to restore sight to the blind. And here we have, in the most literal way, the fulfillment of that proclamation and prophecy. 
Now, when I say that Bartimaeus lived in very different circumstances than Helen Keller did, we need look no further than the description of his predicament offered in the text. Bartimaeus was poor, desperately poor, a beggar. He had no opportunity to study. He had no opportunity to be assisted by devoted teachers and helpers. No acclaim in newspapers and magazines, no chance to become a published author or activist. And yet, what we remember most about Helen Keller was her tenacity and persistence to overcome her disabilities and be heard. And Bartimaeus, despite living in very different circumstances, isn't short on those qualities either, not short on tenacity and persistence. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, he shouts. And when he's told to be quiet, he shouts again, son of David, have mercy on me. In fact, what strikes me immediately about Bartimaeus is his persistence. Now let's situate ourselves a bit. Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover and he's surrounded as he so often was by the crowd, pressing in on him, listening, trying to catch each word that came from his lips. And as the people in the crowd strain to listen, another persistent voice cries out to Jesus. Now, Jesus was employing a method of teaching not uncommon in his day, certainly not uncommon when masses and masses of pilgrims made their way to Jerusalem and the temple. The technique of preaching while he walked. He couldn't have been the first rabbi to walk by Bartimaeus that day. Perhaps he wasn't the first rabbi whose followers had hushed the man trying to carry on their way. Probably Bartimaeus had cried out to others, Probably he had been doing this for a very long time, many Passovers, many years, without a miracle. I'm struck by his persistence. The blind man hears the voices approaching, another crowd, a large crowd. Bartimaeus tries to figure out who this is, who's passing by with so many around him. The voices and the sound of feet are getting louder and closer. Who is it? Jesus of Nazareth, he hears someone say. And like a man casting his line into a quick flowing river, he shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd tries to shout him down. They rebuke him. They order him to be quiet. It was hard enough to hear Jesus, especially for those on his far side, farthest away from him, closest to Bartimaeus at the roadside. But Bartimaeus is persistent. He screams now, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops. He stands still. He beckons Bartimaeus to come closer. And hearing that Jesus has called him over, Bartimaeus springs up and comes to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asks. My teacher, let me see again. Go, Jesus says. Your faith has made you well. And Bartimaeus, receiving his sight, joins the crowd as they go together to Jerusalem. Imagine how he would have rejoiced. Those same people who shouted him down now hear him shout for joy. Your faith has made you well. Your persistence in faith has made you well. And there's something in this story for all of us, I think. If we can situate ourselves within this story, perhaps we find that we are like Bartimaeus. Perhaps we sit in a church pew or an office chair or in the driver's seat during another excruciating commute as he sat at the roadside. Perhaps we feel that the crowd that surrounds us is shouting us down yet again. Perhaps we feel that because of what we believe or how we believe, because of what we love, the way we love, 
that those around us would rather that we were drowned out. After all, it's hard enough to hear Jesus already. If we are Bartimaeus in this story, let us shout like he did. Your faith has made you well. Perhaps we are more like the crowd. Perhaps we are trying desperately to walk close to Jesus, but feel that we keep getting pushed to the periphery. And being on the outside, we catch only every second or third word coming from his lips, and we try again to get closer, but there are just so many others pushing at us, crowding us out, some of them maliciously, others simply because they're so busy preserving their place that they can't see that we are stumbling. And if we are the crowd, let us hold each other up. Your faith has made you well. And perhaps, perhaps in this story, we are like Jesus. That is, perhaps we seek to reach out with a healing hand, with words of comfort and care. Perhaps when the voice cries out over the din, we are the ones who will respond. When the crowd around us seeks to silence those who are most in need, when it seeks to remove the voices of those who shriek from the margins for justice and healing and mercy, perhaps we are the ones who will respond with the love of God. And so in this story, if we are like Jesus, and in this life, if we are the body of Christ, let us hear and let us heal. Your faith has made you well. In that same article in The Atlantic, Helen Keller said this. She said, now and then I have tested my seeing friends to discover what they see. She said, recently I was visited by a very good friend who had just returned from a long walk in the woods and I asked her what she had observed. Nothing in particular, she replied. I might have been incredulous had I not been accustomed to such responses. For long ago, I became convinced that the seeing see little. Long ago, I became convinced that the seeing see little. In Jesus, my friends, we find that seeing is not simply possessing the faculty of sight. No, truly seeing the world and all of its needs requires more of us than passive observation. True sight, true vision requires action. It requires us not only to come to Jesus with our needs, but to also be willing to follow him on the way. When Jesus speaks, his words are of healing and compassion, but they also send Bartimaeus to join the others who follow Jesus along the way. The words of Jesus are actions, and they are actions yet to be. Sending this blind man, sending us out with Jesus, sending us on the way. So together, let us go. Your faith has made you well. And God bless you. Amen.
Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Andrew, our diocesan, and Rasilla, our area bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community and those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, boys and girls, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism, confirmation, holy matrimony, ordination, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you this day and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.